Olama is the easiest way to run large language models on your computer, whether it's Mac or Windows or Linux. And Hugging Face has the largest collection of models available on the internet. And it's always been easy to grab any GGUF file and, and many other formats of models from Hugging Face and import it into Olama, but now Hugging Face has made it even easier to get GGUF models that are hosted on Hugging Face installed and up and running on Olama. Let's take a look at how to do it. Find a GGUF page on Hugging Face. Maybe you found a link in Discord or a web page for a model you want to try. Make sure the model is in a GGUF format or none of this process is going to work. Here's one from Archie AI called Supernova Medius. Archie is a company working on some neat ideas and you can find more about them at archie.ai. I assume that's how you pronounce it, Archie, RC? Yeah. So come up to the top of the page and click the copy button by the name. Now in the terminal, run olama run hf.co slash and paste in the Hugging Face repo name and press enter. Now, if the model creator has done the right thing and populated the GGUF metadata for tokenizer.chat underscore template or created a template file in the repository using a Go template, then you should be all set. In fact, this was the hardest part of creating a model in the past, finding the right template. Now it's possible and more common than I'd like that the model had one template and then was fine tuned on a new template, but that wasn't saved to the model or that the template never got saved to tokenizer.chat underscore template at all. There's no requirement for it to be there. So if you get all sorts of weird output, you'll need to create a model file that corrects the template. But let's hope that you don't hit that case. You know where you don't normally get a lot of weird output? These videos on my channel. If you find them useful, I hope you'll like and subscribe. It makes an amazing difference and I appreciate every single one of you for doing it. I'm Matt Williams and I was a founding member of the Olama team. I'm now focused on building out this YouTube channel, but I'm still super excited by everything the team does, which explains why I haven't moved on to making videos on Kubernetes or motorcycle repair or my life with tigers. If this is your first introduction to Olama, visit olama.com and click the big button in the middle to get started. It's a lot of fun and we're glad to have you here. If the repo has multiple quantizations, then in most cases, you can just add a colon to the end and type in the standard quantization label. And you can use this model name that starts with hf.co or huggingface.com anywhere that you used model names before. Want to remove that new model? Olama RM hf.co and that repo name that we pasted in before. Want to create a new model that uses supernova but adds a new system prompt? or temperature, create a model file, and for your from line, specify hf.co slash archi-ai slash supernova-medius-gguf, and then add your system prompt and any other details you want to change. Now, olama create sn-f supernova.model file, or whatever you called that model file before, and you now have a new model called sn. And there is nothing special about the Olama CLI. Any UI that uses the Olama API should work as is. I just tried it in Page Assist, a cool UI that runs as a Chrome extension, and it worked perfectly well. All the UI devs just got a super new feature yesterday without even lifting a finger. So what's different about these models? Nothing, really. The files still have to be downloaded and are still running locally. But if we take a look at the file system, we can see one change. I'll go into my .olama directory off of my home folder, then models and manifests, and you can see I have a new registry listed. If you used hf.co in your model name, you'll see hf.co here. If you used huggingface.com instead, then you'll see that here. Go into the directory and then you'll see archie-ai, and then supernova-medius-gguf. And then in there is latest. Latest is the manifest that describes each of the layers in the model. 
If you used a different quantization, then that will be the name of the file instead of latest. You can see that there are no parameters defined in this model, just the model weights and the template. The file names are the SHA-256 strings. You can find those in .olama slash models slash blobs. So if later you run olama run huggingface.com slash archi dash AI slash supernova dash media dash GGUF, it will download a new manifest stored in the huggingface.com registry folder, but the layers will have the same SHA-256 values, so nothing else will need to be downloaded, unless of course there's an update to the model weights. There is one circumstance where this will not work. If the model authors on Hugging Face required some sort of login, or accepting a license, or it's a private model, it won't be able to use this new process, and instead you'll have to use the, the old process for importing models. The challenge here is that you'll have to find the template to use. Once you do, you can download the GGUF file, specify the file in the from directory, and then add the template to the file. Hugging Face seems to have come up with a great way to convert Jinja 2 templates into what Olama uses. And hopefully that will find its way into Olama as well, and we don't have to specify a template if it's defined in the model weights file. But looking around, many models don't have the template defined in the model anyway. So how do we see if the template is defined in the weights file? Let's take a look at Supernova. Next to every GGUF file is a little button with two Gs in it. Scroll down and you'll find tokenizer.chat underscore template. That is the template, but it's probably going to be in Jinja 2 format, whereas Olama uses Go templates. It's a different format. Optionally, the maker of the model can also add a template file with the template in Go template format, and it will get added to the model. They can also add a file called system that will set the system prompt and params, which will set the parameters. I'm assuming that in order to get this to work, Hugging Face has created a new Olama registry that grabs files from Hugging Face. It's a really cool implementation, and I'm super excited about this. A huge number of issues in the Olama GitHub are for folks asking for a model to get added to the Olama registry, and this probably solves a lot of them right away. What do you think? Is there a model you're looking forward to playing with using this new process? Share it with me in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.